I'm going to talk today about energy and climate. And that might seem a bit surprising because my full-time work at the foundation is mostly about vaccines and seeds, about the things that we need to invent and deliver to help the poorest two billion live better lives. But energy and climate are extremely important to these people. In fact, more important than to anyone else on the planet. The climate getting worse means that many years their crops won't grow. There'll be too much rain, not enough rain. Uh, things will change in ways that their fragile environment simply can't support. And that leads to starvation, it leads to uncertainty, it leads to unrest. Uh, so the, the climate changes will be terrible for them. So we're in a wonderful situation with uh, electricity in the rich world. But as we make it cheaper, and let's say, let's go for making it uh, twice as cheap, we need to meet a new constraint. And that constraint has to do with CO2. CO2 is warming the planet. And the equation on CO2 is actually a, a very straightforward one. If you sum up the CO2 that gets emitted, that leads to a temperature increase. And that temperature increase leads to some very negative effects. The effects on the weather, uh, perhaps worse, the indirect effects in that uh, the natural ecosystems can't adjust to these rapid changes, and so you get ecosystem collapses. I asked the top scientists in this several times, do we really have to get down to near zero? Can't we just you know, cut it in half or a quarter? And the answer is that until we get near to zero, the temperature will continue to rise. And so that's, that's a big challenge. This is something that has to get to zero. Now we put out a lot of carbon dioxide every year, uh, over 26 billion tons. Uh, for each American, it's about 20 tons. Uh, for people in poor countries, it's less than one ton. It's an average about five tons for everyone on the planet. And somehow we have to make changes that will bring that down to zero. It's been constantly going up. It's only various economic changes that have even flattened it at all. So we have to go from rapidly rising to falling and falling all the way to zero. And this is the amount of CO2 put out for each unit of energy. And so the question is, can you actually get that to zero? Uh, if you burn coal, no. Uh, if you burn natural gas, no. Almost every way we make electricity today uh, except uh, for the emerging renewables and nuclear uh, puts out CO2. And so what we're going to have to do at a global scale is create a new system. And so we need energy miracles. Now when I use the term miracle, I don't mean something that's impossible. You know, the, the microprocessor is a miracle. The personal computer is a miracle. Uh, the internet and its services are a miracle. So the people here have participated in the creation of many miracles. Usually we don't have a deadline where you have to get the miracle by a certain date. Usually you just kind of stand by and some come along, some don't. This is a case where we actually have to drive at full speed and get a miracle in a, a pretty tight timeline. 